distinguish between OG and Astralis. It's not elimination. There's no qualification. We're just seeing who is slotted into that fourth seed for the first group of the second season of the year. Counter-Strike back in action. Yes. Yes, indeed. So, immediately into the cat split. And Zipex back here is going to see them a little late. No early warning upside connector. Yeah, no spot in from Farley towards window, but Config picks up the early kill. And then Zipix, nice positional side of the smoke, but oof, it's really Config. Config and Farley to deal the damage. Dexter's with the response, down to 40 health himself. Support just behind him on Arch, and Dexter getting dangerously close. Now, bomb dropped on fan makes things weird. Ooh, and there's the end from Farley. Two crisp headshots, Yo. locks in a pistol for Astralis, and we just saw that interview with Zipix. He says, BO1s, pistols are important. Yeah, a couple clean ones. That was really nice from Farley. And again, to continue on for a majority. Good start to the day, and we'll get to witness this shot again. Ooh. Wow, that's a, that's a... I think we needed Anders to say in human reactions for that flick. That was a good one. So, uh, Astralis with the 1-0 start. Mirage is a map that comes in, which is kind of an interesting one because it's not a high win rate map for Astralis, but it is something that they've tried to make their own. And when they got on Blame Meth and Config, two of the best Mirage players in the game, it made sense that they tried to play it. And fair play to Config, this is one of the maps where he's been more consistent, even though he struggled overall. We'll be looking to bank on that then today. One of three rifles in the hands of Astralis. MP9s for Glaive and Zipix, and Blame F's opening kill is on to Nexa. More where that came from. Easy second one. As we, of course, still have Neofrag for OG as well. And I feel like with Dexter coming into the team, Neofrag and the conversation around him, it's a bit more muted, understandably. You know, he's got uh, he's got less impact than, than the star that has been Dexter. But overall... It's a good-looking OG that gets swept away by guns. Yes, yeah, I think Neofrag was quite good in Lisbon um, alongside Dexter, and that helped get him to playoffs. But I think since then, I think he's not been that great, unfortunately. So I think Neofrag needs to step up a bit. But I'm sure that he's got some space. I think I expect more from Flamesy as well with somebody who I really thought was you know, going to be able to break into top 20 this year. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be possible. Now we're into this first rifle round of the match. Early setup here towards the A ramp. An early push. Yes, they've countered the aggression quite instantaneously. Oh, but the molly goes far. Mm, looking to catch him on their fallback, and sure enough, that's Farley down by Bricks. Glaive locked into this fight, whether he wants to or not. And the smoke's gonna help. If that Palace player comes out, suddenly Glaive's got much more of a chance of holding on. Goes over and goes down. Flames catching that one as well. Two kills from the young gun. Fiku exits out from Palace, and there is no stopping this OG in terms of getting the bomb site. Yeah. Fast flank from Config unchecked, and Dexter caught jumping. Yeah, they tried to transpose into this A ramp tactic, and the molly that they threw would have been great if OG weren't already up the stairs. So the flash, I think the lamp flash came out. They took that early fight, one down, and because they had to dismantle the Palace push, they weren't in the best positions possible, and they weren't exactly ready for that. So. Really nice from OG to move that fast. It looked like they were going to have some trouble scaling, though, and I think I noticed that in their first game. They were kind of struggling to get across sites, stay together, and move as well, so we'll see if that's going to be a problem. These days, we know, you know, versus the M4s, players like Blame F, for example, are so insane on the silenced M4s that uh, these T rounds can be hard to come by. Next up between them, going to rack up the costs. Imagine two kills there towards the end, counting the save, but now they'll get away with the double. Nexa, of course, ready to uh, ready to shape some more young players, but here's the flamesy exit. First one, nice and easy. That smoke grenade goes down next to Glaive, kind of made it awkward, but then here it is, catching him as he uh, started to go over. Yeah, as soon as that flash comes out, you know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, shoot, we should have thrown the shallow molly instead. Mm -hmm. There's no way they could have known that, so... Again, well done. Back out to mid control. Looks like they're aiming for the B split once again. No one here sitting A ramp or palace. Was really fast in the pistol as well to get up catwalk. This time it's a little more slowed. Smoke between CTs. Molly follows. I mean, there's a huge gap here. No cat players. No Overstack. Yeah, Overstack on top of Khan as well. Oh, trades come down. There it is, that opening towards the catwalk, the opening towards the B site, where last time around it was Config and Farley to hold it off. But Zipix is going to offer us a kill and offer himself a smoke, a little position here to play with. Goes for the peak, takes down Dexter. So Zipix, this time with the rifles, 
Gonna go ahead and stun OG. Fiku will finally get that trade. Down to 48 health himself. Three CTs up, and they're gonna give a little room over to OG here to work this site. Yeah, we've distilled into an interesting position. It's not too bad for the T's. It looks like a plant will be offered over, but I don't know if OG know where where the retake's gonna come in from. They've probably still got some anxiousness towards the B apps flank as well. Rightfully so. Oh, that's actually an interesting spot for Fiku to play. Config playing the long con. Neofrag keeping eyes on it. Molotov forcing him out ever so slightly. And yet he still holds on to this position. And like you said, right, Fiku back towards that door. And it's Neofrag to catch the cat player. Still thinking about apartments. Config has slipped past. And with that, they'll slide through with another round win. So Astral is bouncing right back. Ah, I thought that was actually, I thought that was going to work out. I like the spot that Fiku played. It's kind of impossible to find if you don't specifically come through the natural market entry exit. But Glaive does. They catch him out and they don't win that retake. This is all about Zipix here on the hold. He's got this strong line from the van. There's no molly that comes down on the exec. And he stops that fast pressure coming off a of cat as well. I think the setup overall invited OG in. And I think at the moment that they took cat control, they were looking good. I mean, going down one for one is beautiful. So overall, they were quite favored until Zipix stopped him. to see him on that scoreboard early as Farley clambers up and Dexter doesn't get away with this pick and a push from Blame F as well oh push with the nade wow. finds him downtown dunked on as Dexter's dead that was a chess move by Blame F yeah. he, uh, Dexter you could see he was holding for the push for a slight second but then fell off it Got chased down by the artillery and Blame F. He's, he's still making presence here in mid. Always keen to float around these positions, to re-aggress back in for more, and sure enough, this time it pays off again. Five versus three off the back of Blame F. Who goes for another? Kind of locked between underground and top mid, Neofrag catching him but losing half his own health. Config then activates from window. Flamesy never sees it coming. A quick death for him and a 4v2 left over. Yeah, real beautiful here. The move from Blame F. And also the agreement from all of Astralis to stay inside of mid. I think that's the big one. Sometimes you see when a, a team loses a position, then they go back in the most vanilla setup possible. But here's Astralis showing their confidence a bit. And it pays off greatly, so. Fantastic start from Config as well. Six and one. Maybe seven. Maybe not. <laughs> Op barrel to the front of the head. Neo Frag, can he still piece this together? Bomb on his back, but a player in Palace, and that should be the end of him. Glaive gonna slide out just as he gets towards sight to give Astralis their fourth. You can see the game plan from OG. It feels like both teams quite prepared for Mirage. I think it was OG who allowed it to come through. As we heard from Zipix, he kind of made it seem like there was no surprises in the sense that they're hoping they would get Mirage. They're looking for it, and OG said, yeah, they'll give it to us, so let's see if we want to take it. And I think them abusing these, this cat play and stuff makes it feel like, all right, yeah, they've got the right idea. But ideas are only half the battle. Right now, the only person or people executing is going to be that config blame F. Six kills a piece. And you brought it up right before the game went live. Statistically, and as Astralis first adopted this map, it was that duo that kind of had their comfort zone, wanted to take it over. And we're getting a good showing of it. But Neofrag shows some talent with the Deagle, kills one inside connector to be traded out by Glaive. So again, emphasis on this mid fight, but no hardware for OG and therefore no chance. Yeah. Dexter all alone. Seen a lot of confidence from him in the interviews went out recently. Yeah. Someone called him cocky for, for his, cocky. his statement about uh, how teams were calling him up while other operas were joking about him uh, taking their spot. But I think he was just uh, stating facts. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Very matter of factly. Yeah. It's confidence if you can back up what you're saying. Yes. And I think coming off of that Lisbon performance. Yeah, we, we did an interview with him and he kind of spoke bluntly about the fact that yeah, it looked like for him it just that was the resume. You know, if I think if he didn't play well at Lisbon, he said, Why would any team pick him up? He proved a lot with that one. So yep. that was a good sign. A lot of questions kind of circling around him after the whole spirit departure, right? How's he going to be in an English-speaking team? And he showed us that 
Maybe communication's not as important as racking up the headshots. Because individually, dude, the guy was unstoppable in Lisbon. Therefore, earned his full time. Oh, yeah. He was talking, too, man. He was, uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was comfy. All right. Another uh, quick A setup. I think Strauss won some points in terms of conditioning here, taking over mid-control over and over again. A little bit more comfortable. They've also just slightly cleared out the underpass, it looks like, with config. I'm not sure exactly what angle he has here. And if things go right, it looks like OG should be able to score a plant. But Glaive moves inside of smokes. <gasps> and moves out through them as well. With that opening, Blame F going over top of the mid smoke. And all of a sudden we've got OG unfortunately boxed in, right? We kind of highlighted that that hesitation, that scaling difficulty in a previous gun round. Well, this one too just gets stunned for a second because of Glaive who gets away and then that Blame F boost makes it way too easy to clean up another couple pieces. Pushes this one down onto Dexter, barrel of the op spotted, config blasted, and two counter terrorists towards spawn. But Farley locks it in. Astralis, a comfortable 6-1 lead. Yeah, always a bad sign when you're trying to put that bomb down on default and your CT smoke comes up. So I got to make sure the site doesn't feel like it's miles across and get it, get through it faster. Now, easier said than done, of course. The move that Glaive made was really confident and super sharp as well. So I think well, we are given this treat. He might be the goat hybrid, man. It's okay, very no, that's, rare. That's Stown. Stown is the goat hybrid, but he, he uh, he's up there. It's very rare. So we watch and wait. Glaive off at the top of stairs. There's the scaling. Nice and quick from OG, but a dink through smoke leads Blame F to the man advantage. Farley's ensuring that nobody crosses over, so as Zipix takes CT spawn, Glaive also has a set of eyes on that cross. And a rambunctious bunch of CTs go pushing through that smoke. Bomb plant, that's something. Two kills after, you take it. But then Zipix cleans up Neofrag, and they've got Fiku confirmed back sight raiding him with grenades as the retake shines through. Yeah, and at least they, they got that bomb down, but 7-1 uh, to one here quickly for Astralis. Feels like it's been about five minutes since this game started. They're on fire. No real bad questions for them, and they've also clued into what OG want to do, which I feel like if uh, this game is going to go OG's way, it's going to start with them you know, picking the right sites and then winning those, converting those rounds. But right now, they're picking the right site, losing those rounds. Now they're probably losing confidence in the fact that their game plan isn't going according to plan. And they've got to probably dig a little deeper for some new ideas. Now, let's see what else they have in store. We haven't seen this affinity towards the B site, unless it's coming off of that, you know, quick pistol from Cat. One round where they press in. But they had Dexter in there early. And just kind of spread the numbers, right? Well, they also don't know, I think, about the second op in play yet. And why would you expect it? Yeah. Everybody postures, and then leans back. Do the setup off of spawn, so Farley's on cat this time around. And Config will leave his post as soon as they have cleared out everything else. OG just penduluming back and forth. Between the back of halls and a Glaive in a new position on the site. It's a very classic move here from OG. Very simple. And fortunately for them, there is no one from Astralis inside of it. I mean, Neofrag is on duty to watch for it. it looks like he's going to be coming in as a late lurk. Right now, just spotting at the bottom of connector through this tiny gap of the boxes. Config sniper up on triple box, waiting for that ramp play to come out. Oh, he gets one, but it's traded right back by Dexter. He's now scouring that bomb site, looking for more contact. Oh, they need to go. 20, oh, okay. 20 seconds, that kill right there. That opens up connector. Neofrag looking for the fight. Glaive holds off, but Dexter connects with another, and Flames just extending. No bomb pickup yet. 10 seconds left. They're going to go and grab it, scramble for it. All is good unless... Oh, wait. We can't. Farley back in. Flames gets onto the bomb. Plant's going to go down. Fiku's shots confirmed that both are nearby. But does Farley still think he's triple? Bomb cross back. Oh, there he saw it. Fiku and Flames split up. 
One towards ramp, one stationary on the site. The fight goes the way of Flames and OG get that second round, but a little sketchy towards the end of things. Yeah, don't feel good about that, honestly. A testy position, I mean, they made it happen because the kills that come down, but the way they were postured up here, it's like, let's see if they make mistakes. And that's a fine attitude to have when you're up on time and up on numbers. But there's actually a moment here where the Astralis don't overpeak, then OG might beat themselves. And I think uh, Astralis realized that OG should have as well. And will hopefully try to speed up a little bit more in those positions now. They double smoke the window. Oh my god, and Config jumps across. That's one of those timings normally this guy's dead. But as he reinvests into the double op once more, he gets to hang on to it. Oh, did they double smoke the window to counter the Molotov? Could be. Oh. Pretty wide opening on Catwalk. Config's going to have to deliver. And if he gets flames inside of apps, then his eyes turn back. Down goes Neofrag. Zipix putting up numbers. Ooh. Another double kill from inside sight. They know Config's here, but that missed shot opens the door. Flamesy jumps down right alongside Fiku. Blame F slipping into sight. And yet again, we're talking about a bomb that's down in the dirt. And as Flames makes a ruckus, Fiku swaps out to the AK. Looking for the clutch, and he starts it with the Blame F frag. But that takes him down to 13 health, so it's an easy ender from Glaive. Yeah, very slippery here from Blame F. They went to check the market door just in case. He was already out. A little faster than you expect. And another great round out of Zipix. Yeah, second double from the spot. Ooh, they've got him distracted with config. Dexter, a little tunnel vision. Yeah, he's doing he's doing fantastic work. He's been playing this spot almost the same exact area a few times now, but different, slightly different peaks, different timings, and I feel like the the, the way that Astros have been dynamic with the off placement, it's hard to read where his help is kind of come from. All the cash invested into this one, OG. Limited with a single Galil. They wait out that mid presence early. Glaive just siphoning back towards CT spawn, and Config still wants this fight. Got to be cautious though. Nexa coming out from underground. Wow, look how many people are in different spots so far. I mean, we've had Farley, Config, and Zipix all playing Cat in different rounds. Config being uh, kind of way more pervasive. Good use of the op. So a slight adjustment. We've seen one from OG already going back to this A exec, but last time it was Neofrag alone in mid. This time Nexa's underground. And they know about him. It's going to occupy config. Confirms the ops inside of connector. And Neofrag dead. At the hands of Zipix, shaving one off of middle. 40 seconds left. Blame could go back to the window peak. Nexa nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's just got to be ready for this peak. Meanwhile, a site under question, config, two players, Ooh. drops Flames up close. Regains vision, and at 25 seconds, Blame F fighting Nexa towards middle. If Nexa goes down like that, then suddenly, yet again, OG gonna have a strong difficulty crossing into this site. Another op kill comes through from config, and Dexter dead in the no man's land. Astralis' defense, rock solid. It's awesome, and it looks like an offense, the way that they're moving around. They're taking a lot of aggressive control, and I think the best part is we're almost seeing, you know, spawn base plays in, in their setup. So they got two ops, they have Config moving to wherever he wants to, and then different players are supplanting his positions on Cat. We had Farley spotting the window where a Config was in the previous round. Seen pistols every other round. Those pistols rear their ugly heads yet again for OG. Sea of flashbangs though, to be thrown at this B bomb site. Again, Config up on Catwalk, but Blame F is very quickly here, so even if Config didn't deliver that first off kill and the second, things should have gone swimmingly. Damage into Neofrag, that one is cookie cutter clean. They just carve through OG's Tech Nines and Desert Eagles. They're going to have something to be proud of if, if this game ends the way that it's going right now for Astralis. This is a very strong map so far. Going to make uh, OG regret taking it to Mirage in the first place and uh, bring their stat up a little bit. Their map percentage win rate for Astralis. Two ops maintained as we close out the end of this half. Three rounds to go. Next 
Axe is going to try his hand again from underpass. And, and see how we, like, tone it down a little bit again? Because you've already got OG worried about every single move. So now the only aggressive place here is for Farley. He does have to worry about the bench peak that could come out late if they're not watching underpass. And they don't have full vision of that right now. But, okay. They're watching the stop. The Clay Pigeon gets across. Next, uh, still yet to spread his wings. Molotov holds him back. By the time he comes out, right, maybe potentially looking for that bench peak towards Catwalk. Farley's gone. Blame F is retreated. And at the minute mark, Astralis just kind of comfortably gives them a little bit of space. Step one, takeover mid, complete. But now we're down to 45 seconds and this op, I mean, is just calcified here on the A ramp, waiting for any kind of shadow to come through. Gets away from the flash, drops his own smoke. Starting to pull away. We're talking four players up inside connector from OG. Wild spray from Glaive does not connect. Blame F still cautious about window. 20 seconds left over. And here comes the commitment. Glaive goes down first. Oh, oh, oh. Config with a nice little snap. And Blame F a helping hand. No headshot on those bricks. 15 seconds left over. And this one just comes to an absolute halt. No movement out of con for OG. They're fighting to try and get their way out ramp. But the time is simply not there. And nor are the round wins. An 11th to Astralis. Yeah, they're getting shaken up right now. Nice final shot from Dexter. That's the one bit of solace they have. They get to keep the op in the next round. But, man, uh, that could not have gone better from OG's eyes, I think. The only problem I saw was that, uh, you know, we don't have an attack forming on either side. All we do is have mid control with a lot of health at the 45 second mark. So it's already a little scary from that point on. And then, you know, Blame can get away with peaks like this just walking out of the window because how can they watch everything at that point in the round? There's still five alive from the CT side. Sometimes when Trace talks to Config, I just think it looks like Config talking to Config. Yeah, it really is. It is. Config's alter ego. Triple smokes down. Let's see it, Farley. Oh, okay. Forgot to left click. Yeah, he didn't see anything. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Round 14, not one for him. Glaive, though, finding that gap through the stair smoke. So it's at least the four versus four. But they know that CT spawns under question, so poor Zipix is going to have his hands full. Flashed around the corner, catches Fiku close. There's the Flames trade. Glaive Snow has got him on that tiny little corner. A small island for Flamesy to try and hang on to. Oh, they don't flash it. There's the op shot again, but not a third time. Blame F clears it out. Triple box from Nexa, though. Goes for the fight versus Glaive. He's going to have to 180 to lock in Blame F, who's now into the 1v2. And he knows. His likelihood very low, but he'll hunt along and Nexa's is going to end him. So OG finally, surely enough, breakthrough with a third round. Yeah, that was blame right there. You could just see we're at the point where it was worth it to even get a kill. Even if he dies, he's not going to win the round, but they're just up so much that they have nothing to worry about. So we get a shimmer out of OG. One more round one. There is a pulse. There is a pulse, and we get into four-round territory, you know, again, CT side can be very friendly these days, so we'll talk about it when we get there, but it's mostly about the fact that Astralis have clearly been playing so well. I think some halves are won by, like, the silence and force of the CT advantages. I think this half was won because Astralis were just clearly the much more better, much better and more dynamic team. Yeah, that rotating door of positions and guns. Struck fear and OG early. You could see it. Dexter's trying to keep it cool. Crawling towards Catwalk. Farley and Connector this time. Clicks into Nexa. Config right there. So again, this double off setup on full display. It's been held onto or rebought like eight consecutive rounds now. A real feature of this dominant CT side from the Danes. But OG's pulse. Could still be enough to keep this T side alive. Fiku stranded. And fighting back as a 7 HP Glaive looks to hang on. And that frag grenade was destined for him. Blame F saves him. And with three players tagged up, there's a little possibility for a 2v4. You know, they've got the opening if they can just get past Config, wow. but he cuts Neofrag down at the knees. And an end from Blame F means 12 3. Fortunately for OG, it is a long road ahead if they're going to make this Mirage comeback happen. Uh, if not, staring that fourth seed of Group A in the face. 
after just a couple B01 losses. Scoreline's making some sense here. I think Zipix, he, he went nine and seven, but he was one of the stars of that first half for sure. He's, you know, mm. a B player, so he's not going to get that much action, but the kills he got were pretty much all versus you know, equally armored opponents. And Blame F just had to top the scoreboard as he's been doing all year. Config right there with him though, right? This yes. is that this is that classic Astralis Mirage formula. When they adopted it, we look to blame and config to deliver, and they have today. But uh yeah, the the more interesting part was that, you know, he didn't just go on to cat every single round, which is what we normally see from config. So they've evolved, they've developed. They're learning. Ooh. And Whoa. Dexter's kinda had enough. Two headshots come through from him in mid. Zipix tries to hop his way into the B site and he never even hits the ground. His corpse does, though. Flames straight to the head. Blame F finds his exit into the A site. So what do we have here? A Blame F potential clutch. If Glaive goes down, he's got eight health. Wouldn't expect him to hang on for too long. But Blame F's armored P250. They are quite slow to this, but they have lots of time at the same time. So. And a kit. That could help. Double flashes as well on Nexa. He's going to throw one over towards that CT spawn, but we do get the Fiku A ramp flank about to strike. That could be the end of Blame F. Anything Glaive can offer Blame F as help would be perfect. And that P250 kill is critical, but Fiku right there to trade it back. Glaive could try to go around town, but with that kit, it's going to make the difference. Nexa sticks the defuse just as Glaive was going to have a chance to come at him. Imagine if there's no kit and it's a 10 second. Maybe he gets them off. Yeah. Maybe we're talking Astralis with both pistols, but instead they'll split them 1-1. Yeah, I mean, nothing bad about making that kind of risk when you're such low HP, and uh, if it's a two-on-one, maybe he gets off. Wow. Nice couple of shots from Dexter. Shades of Farley with that one from the first pistol. And uh, OG have leveraged a way to create a dignified half, at least, uh, or attempt at a comeback. And they'll have all the good guns that they want. I mean, I don't think, you know, this this win would be as legitimate if Astralis didn't split pistols and have to close it out on the T side. I think that'll say a lot, so... Let's see what they have in store for us. Yeah, still plenty of time for things to go horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's Counter-Strike. Yeah. Flames and Neofrag, easy does it. Just gonna chew through this attempted buy of Astralis. They get nothing other than that last Blame F kill, so four standing for OG, converting pistol. Excellent start to their own defense. But like we said, to start off that pistol, it is a long road. Mm -hmm. Good uh, good sign right there. Melting them down really fast. Maintain a lot of the guns. Very few, what, re one rebuy, if anything. And Astralis will keep going into the game plan. The sound that you're wondering about is the glass turning gray. Oh, that's what that is. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was in this room or outside, yeah. but now, okay. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Right, the combat glass. We're back at Blast London with that. It's great. Dexter, quick one. And Zipix and the bomb down in mid. Blame F fed to the MP9, so Nexa's gonna make a little bit of money. And the fight towards ramp goes swimmingly for OG. There's a number three for Dexter. All too easy on that A site. Yeah, uh, I mean, Flamesy's hand's not red yet. Well, do you notice how Rugga constantly puts himself between Dexter and Flame Z in between each... At the end of each round, he's over there. Yeah, he starts on that side. Yeah, he's taking the impact. That's true. That's... It, it's in Flame's contract. That energy has to go somewhere, but it's better Rugga than Flame Z probably. Yeah. They need to get, like, a dummy on the right side of... Because of that Lisbon is Dexter. cute. I mean, it's one tournament you got to deal with it. Yeah. But now he's on the team. It's no longer a stand-in. Yeah. I'm talking an entire be, season yeah, of abuse. Irreparable damage here. He's not careful. It's just the keyboard. Oh, it's a mouse hand. Never mind. I was going to say keyboard hand less important. It would have been your keyboard hand. Nope. Oh, you use the mouse yeah, on yeah, the right yeah. side? Okay. Yeah, of course. I may be left-handed, but I'm not a freak. <laughs> yeah. Oh. This one gets cold. Icy cold here. OG just going to keep one tucked inside of Tetris. Dagster floating around the ticket booth. Astral is going to crawl towards top mid. Blame F through the underground. A oh, less of an inspired setup here from the CT side. You can see Neofrag kind of guessing as to where the T's could be. Just a nice setup for Astralis and 
Now they're putting some pressure down in connector. Denying vision lines and setting up for the B split. Flame F though, he's inside connector. Oh, just barrel stuffs Fiku. Flamesy goes in, tries to get another one towards Catwalk, but Glaive is ready for that. Nexa, up close, doing damage, but not doing enough to hold on to that bomb site. And like you said, less inspired setup means less confirmed information. We get that quick clash inside Khan. Maybe Flamesy gets a double kill. Could have helped out the bomb site, but ultimately that's Astralis getting exactly what they want. Neofrag's position as the rifler there is the most it's the most high impact position for a rifler to be on CT side, but it's also the easiest to overstress, especially if they lose cat control, if there's even the thought that someone could be up in the ladder room. So you can see already, I mean, there's just not much, there's so much time left on the clock and he's already not sure what they've lost control of. These trades are beautiful. And they were just as ready for OG, I think, in this T side with that re-aggression at the top of con. Yep. I had two players in there watch the push. Sometimes you can throw your smoke down, your molly down, and no one comes through. But sometimes people come through and it works out really well, so. Excellent emergency protocol, Blame F. Clamps down on it. While Flamesy floats around in middle, he's not going to see anything just yet. Straw is comfortable just burning off the first 20 seconds. Well, Farley, somebody about to walk into the scope. Well time flashbang. Frag comes over. Excellent amount of damage. 69 between the two nades. The double HE, they've got uh, info on two, on A at least. And sometimes it is just one spotting from the ticket. So another B split is imminent. We've got Blame Meth walking the other pass. He's gonna perform this crawl. He still has his full nade kit as we can see, so he can put enough pressure on connector, window. Deny lines of sight. But Glaive is now walking back towards the A ramp. Okay, so we're looking at the A split instead. Jump up into the window. We're looking at two window, two, three con. Oh. Ooh, this one's imperative. Flames. Kind of caught in that gunfight. Neofrag, not sure which way he has to look first, but he holds on to Zipix. And that's a T side smoke at the top of Connector so that Confi can get out towards Staircase, but it doesn't work for him. Flames comes out, cuts it down, and this one just falls flat for the Danes. Yeah, that was real nice from Flames. Again, he has a, a good fight there towards the A ramp, but if he loses it, it's pretty much over. And he gets back over to Triple, gets another kill. So Astralis get extinguished. Ooh, and another. Uh -huh. Blade going down time. after time. Let's go, boys. That's doubly expensive. Will they, will buy for sure. Yeah, will they be able to afford the rebuys is the question. That was looking comfortable and, and you know, all looked good up until that one critical point where things just kind of got very uninspiring. Well, yeah, I think the only clue they had in terms of information was, again, the double HE towards the ramp. So they could see maybe there's heavier lean towards A. Mm. They waited enough time that a rotation could have come through. So maybe they thought OG were going to second guess it, start to lean over towards B, maybe take information somewhere else. And I think try to find a timing where they could exec then. Not exactly sure, but felt like that's what was coming. But in fact, OG just didn't overthink it themselves. They just stayed, stayed in place. Uh, and even Neofrag inside jungle, despite having the grenades coming through window and, and that presence inside connector, never looked too uncomfortable. So easily slapped away in round 20. Round 21, single AK, blame F. Possesses it. Dexter sees a little bit of presence in the apartment, and that's, of course, bomb included. That AK still hunts from bottom mid towards Cat. No heads on display just yet, but Neofrag's not far from it. Yeah, it's a very fine anti-eco setup so far. With a kill to take the edge off. See if anyone makes a mistake in window, but it's vacant. Conglomerate has started to work over towards beat. Dexter on full alert and talking. But falling off. Falling how far back? All the way into market. Wow, super pass. No, not even. Just outside still. So able to get back into the bomb site pretty quickly. Neofrag pulled off of cat. Blame F 
Able to use that AK for one. Goes back for the repeat. Nexa comes wide. And it is a trade train of frags for OG's eight. Yeah, not bad. They did. Uh, it looked like he was maybe going to mark the window. Could have got smoked, of course, but he was out in front of it. Happy to take the more confident angle. And that's after kicking it off with the first kill. Still looking. All right, guns up. Glaive, obviously, limited because of that whole dying after time type situation. Mac 10 for him in round 22. But a quick fight set up. Config no longer bogged down by the big green. Looks to swing that AK in mid, but uh, very little presence from OG in mid this round. Yeah, they don't really care about it as much. Now again, I feel like last time, Neofrag trying to deal with both window and connector, they never kind of pounced on him. Uh, the closest they ever came was when Config underhands his own smoke just to get out towards stairs. And that's once things had already started to go south. So I'll be curious to see if Neofrag feels the heat a little bit more this time. This is a more classic move from Nexa. He loves to push the upper B apps. And uh, he's got this outpost in the corner. And he can just work on a big flank when he wants to. But it looks like they're hoping it's going to be A. And it seems like they'll get what they wish for. Here comes Zipix at the helm. Glaive's Mac 10 exits from ramp. Farley not far behind him. And this time a T smoke on jungle. So opening kill is theirs. Neofrag wants to go out. Blame F barrel stuffs him. And it is an excellent five versus three. Straight out of the gate for Astralis. Now things start to fall back the other direction. Dexter over towards CT. Holds on with one. Farley winning that kill towards Cat though. Pushes these last two CTs into a very problematic spot. Farley breathing down their necks. Ices out the final two. Yeah, nice moves from him. I liked how they were kind of giving fights to each other in that in that connector. They took advantage of connector, and I think the worrying part there for OG was they had Neofrag again in the same spot, sitting in the jungle. He was doing the well the last couple of rounds. But this time, I mean, you've got Underbalk to deal with the connector split, which is not a good position to be just for the connector split. And then Neofrag going to cause them more problems in the rest of this game. Fight comes through, Neofrag on a Falmus. That's a demotion. Dexter going for it, and he catches config top middle. So a man advantage for OG out of the gate. That's that's the F duel we know. Yep. Gets the frag, hits flames, jumps back in for a second versus blame. And just like that, he's one mid by himself. Oh, easy pick up there. And see, it's Farley. And now it's plays that you only make when you start losing players that start coming out. Yeah, running through smoke with bomb. Mm -hmm. Classic. Yeah, actually, yeah. Wow, that's actually. Yeah, maybe a, just a bridge too far in terms of risks this early. Even though 3v5, I think, I don't think he knew he had the ball. Well, I'm going to give him more credit than that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Now you got to pretend you're playing so they don't come hunt you. <laughs> Well, this is going to continue the trend for Astralis. Not a comfortable one on T side. Just one and done rounds. No consecutive wins since they've swapped sides. Kind of the OG experience, right? But also only two rounds away from the win. Money's not horrendous either for Astralis, barring Zipix on 15. I think we try to contrast what we're seeing here. Like, uh, it's great. We've got, you know, the Abdul peak in mid where he's getting in your face, doing it alone. I think some of the risks we're seeing, though, coming out of OG, it is one player who has is inspired with an idea. How do I take control of this round? But we'll, again, when we looked at Astralis, it was more than one player. They worked in cohesion. They had different players playing different spots. And while they were aggressive in one spot, they had lots of coverage, re-aggressions, transitions to multiple setups. I'm not seeing those layers out of OG so far. And I think OG, I mean, Dexter himself, he has, he has the power to take over a game. He's proven that, I think, in the first half of this year but it's not going to be enough uh, to for him to do this alone. Great round nonetheless. Of course, yeah. Two crucial kills as well, right? Blame F and Config. Total mid control off of those ones. Like, yeah, that's a round winning moment from Dexter. Now it's just a matter of doing it again and again. Farley onto the off. Comes around the corner, no smoke down. Okay. Just jumps into the middle of the traffic. And jumps right back. 
but now down to eight HP, so not a comfortable round for him whatsoever with a minute and a half still left. Oh. Get a clumping from Astralis, everybody leaning towards this B site. Are they boosted in window? Oh yeah, they are, okay. Watching the underpass for a second. Abdul trying to figure out a way. He can get some leverage. Or I should call him Dexter. Because the memes, I keep calling him Abdul. Well. It's okay. He loves it. Yeah. And he's ready. Sees a couple cross flashbangs. Flashes. Make things uncomfortable. Oh, missed shot. Dexter's going to be swarmed. He's hanging on for dear life. Glaive comes around the back end. And now Config looking to go deep into the market. Off point blank into Fiku. Super low HP on Farley and Glaive, though. So you've got to think that Config needs to be a piece of this. Wow. And he just stops Flamesy with that op. Combat opping inside market. Config, the opper, baby. He is, yeah. Sometimes he is. Every once in a while. He brings that heat on Mirage. And they'll pause because, of course, they're in a winning position. No matter the health, they've still got three up. And uh, it's already Neofrag deciding to save. Bomb goes down safely. Lots of time to spare. And uh, Astralis will take 15 off of this. Beautiful flashbangs. I mean, those were seamless. It was as soon as they were in view of Dexter through that second window that he got flashed off twice. And then he missed his first shot, which that's the opening. That's, uh, that's, that's the last chance he had to get a really good way back into the round. He got a kill, but it was more of a parting gift. So Astralis touched 15. Super solid barrage so far. Really showing the strength. Maybe we're their good luck charm. It could be. Yeah. Uh, Config had one of his worst maps in a few months earlier today. Oh, that's Andrew's fault then. So he's, yeah, it's Andrew's fault, yeah. If you can't explain it, blame it on Andrews. Blame Andrews, yeah. Here's Glaive as well. Gotta say, Glaive's pathing, right? You said that, you know, Dexter gets this parting gift of the one kill on site, but he was ready for that bench peak. Yeah. And Glaive's able to just slide around, make sure either you did absolutely nothing and stayed in your house for a month. Yes. Or you were off in some tropical isle. Italia, as, uh, as I would say. Yeah, yeah. Man loves some pasta. Farley. So blind that he doesn't see Flames until eight seconds later. And by the time he hits the shot, Flames survives it. So we've got a man advantage here for OG, despite that one kill back. Neofrag out of the equation for round 25. But the equation still leans the way of OG. Carry the X. Oh, right as the smoke goes down. And that leaves us asking why Glaive, two clean kills in mid, suddenly advantage back to Astralis. And they are just going to go silent. Yeah. He's the assassin. I mean, look how much utility is left over. They know Nexa hasn't pushed the upper B, and he's just got this tiny little MP9 to hold down the entire half of the map. Measly little pea shooter. However, point blank on the door, but Zipix not inbound. Yeah, I mean, he's just, I don't think there's going to be a rotation. If they do, I mean, they risk the whole game. There's some situations where it's fine to save, but this round is, is still winnable. They just kind of need the one site holder to get two kills, and I think it's on Astralis to make sure they just don't run into the wrong site. So seeing if OG try to search back some information, and we'll soon make a decision. And it looks like it's going to go towards the A site with Blame here on the ramp waiting. Two of the lesser performers so far from OG, tasked with holding off on this A site. Fiku, oh, desperate. Goes for the full commit, caught on the reload and the jump down. Was just, unfortunately, kind of useless in stopping Blame F from getting up from that ramp. So sure enough, after having to alleviate the curse of the one and done round wins, it seems like Astralis not only bouncing back from their loss versus NIP earlier in the day, but keeping this one very clean. Yeah, this is a clinic. 12-3 I mean, CT side into some economic problems, but still strong recovery and good-looking ideas. Even better 